Hey there guys and welcome to my lesson on series and convergence. So what is a series? Well, sequences are basically functions and a series is going to be the sum of that sequence. Okay, now remember a sequence of course does not uh, include zero or any negative numbers. Uh, so here when we're looking at uh, where we're talking about a series, it's basically taking what we've done with a sequence and now we're going to take the sum of that sequence. Now you can take the sum of an infinite sequence. You could also take the partial sum of an infinite sequence. It just kind of depends on what you're looking at. Now, what we're gonna be looking at is, can you find some uh, sums of a uh, series? And can we use the sums of those series to determine whether a function or whether a sequence, I should say, is going to converge or diverge. So what we see here, this is generally speaking, how we find the sum of an infinite series. We just take all of the sequential terms and add them up and uh, there may be some you know, notations that we need to review when it comes to the summation sigma, sigma there. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, move on here and see what we have going forward. Uh, here it's talking about finding partial sums uh, that uh, what we're looking for, what it, the, the first statement, we will find that when a sequence of partial sums converges, then the series will also converge. Okay, now that in and of itself is going to be uh, a little bit troublesome a little bit down the road because in a little while what we're going to be looking at is trying to determine when something is going to converge or diverge but we're not going to be looking at, at it necessarily with the sums we're going to be looking at it with the limits and the way that a sum and the way that the limit look at it are going to not necessarily match but this is a good example of, of what we can look at back to as a reference here, uh, we will find that when a sequence of partial sums converges, then the series will also converge. We can kind of refer back to that in a little while when we start looking at how we use limits to determine whether or not something is going to converge or diverge. Uh, here, the lesson begins with a look at a geometric series and telescoping series. Uh, the next lesson will explore Peary series and harmonic series. Now, geometric series are things that uh, ideally you've probably had some exposure to already. Uh, arithmetic and geometric series are very common in pre-cal classes or college algebra classes, uh, where uh, because they're the most the familiar as far as an arithmetic sequence is analogous to a linear function and a geometric sequence is analogous to an exponential function. And we have a strong foundation in both of those types of functions. Now a telescoping series, uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but essentially what a telescoping series is gonna do is uh, mathematically, it's gonna wind up being the sum of just the first term and the last term. It just has a, a, a way that mathematically a lot of things wind up canceling. We don't have a, a lot of things dealing with telescoping series, but they are kind of unique and interesting uh, in their own right. And uh, we'll talk about harmonic series a little bit later and P-series in, in the next lesson that follows after this one. Um, but again, the difference between a sequence and a series is the fact that a sequence is just you know, a function where we focus on only uh, natural numbers, one through infinity, uh, as its input values, and a series is going to be the sum of that sequence. A lot of times people will maybe even use a sequence and a series interchangeably, uh, but understand when we say series, specifically we're gonna be talking about the sum of something, but if we say a sequence, we're only talking about the actual function itself, whatever that happens to be, okay? Uh, and da, 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 da. so I think that's all we need to really talk about here. Moving on, taking a look at the next bit, uh, write the indicated partial sum for the series. So this part here really should just be a uh, kind of review uh, where S, they're using S to indicate that they're looking for the sum. And in this case, they're looking for the partial sum, the, oop, I don't want my highlighter anymore. Uh, we're looking for the partial sum 
of the first term. Oh, well, the partial sum of the first term is just the first term. So here I would say s of 1 is just going to be, and you can substitute 1 for n. We would say 1 over uh, 2 times uh, 1 minus 1 in the exponent spot, which would be 1 over 2 to the 0 power, which of course is just 1, and 1 over 1 simplifies to be 1. And so that's what we would look at as the sum of the first partial series. Uh, and we move on to the next one. So we already know the, you know, what S sub 1 is. Uh, so in this case, here I'm really going to be looking at uh, what's the first term plus whatever the second term is. Well, the first term, uh, we know that that one's going to be a 1. And so the second term, if we substitute a 2 in there, that's going to be uh, 1 over 2 to the second power or 2 to the 2 minus 1 power, which would just be 2 to the first power, which would be 1 half. Uh, so that would be 1 and 1 half as a compound fraction or uh, 3 over 2, depending on your preference. Uh, so the third one, the third partial sum, that would be the first three numbers added together. Well, we already know these two. We, we already know that those two are 3 over 2, 3 over 2. Uh, so we would just need to find the third one, and if I substitute the th uh, a 3 into the expression uh, that we had, uh, we're going to wind up with a 1 fourth. And so the sum of these, uh, let's see, we would need a common denominator of 4 on the left fraction, so that would be uh, 6 plus 1, that would be 7 over 4. Now here where it says the partial sum of n, in this case because it, it's it's asking for the partial sum of all of them, that's really not a partial sum anymore. This is the entire sum. So that would be like saying, you know, we had 1, then we had 1 half, then we got the 1 fourth, and if we go on to the next one, we're going to get a 1 eighth, and it just continues on uh, to infinity. And that's what we're looking at for partial sums of a sequence or partial sums of a series. Like I said, it's sometimes hard to tell the difference between them. They, they're, they're used so interchangeably. Uh, definitions of convergence or divergence for a series. Uh, for, the, for an infinite series, uh, the nth partial sum is given by, you know, uh, essentially what we just saw in that last expression. Now, if the sequence of the partial sums converges, then the series converges. Meaning, here, what they're saying, if the sequence of the partial sums converge, meaning that uh, meaning that you get a specific number, like the sum equals, I don't know, 3 or something. Uh, so the sum of uh, the sequence of partial sums approaches a specific number, meaning that converges, then the series itself will converge. Now, here, the limit uh, of s, the limit s is called the sum of the series, and the braces where we're looking at the uh, sequence, the sequence of the sum, uh, if it di if that diverges, then the series diverges. Okay, uh, and of course, if the sum diverges, it means like if the sum goes to uh, infinity uh, or something like that. Now, we're not really going to be focusing too much on like an oscillating thing here because it's going to be uh, you know, if we're looking at sums, it's going to be hard to determine whether something is going to diverge necessarily uh, with an oscillating series because it, uh, you know, I, I suppose that they will go to infinity as they continue or they may go to zero depending on what the outputs happen to be. Uh, but most of this stuff what we're going to be looking at in this lesson uh, is really going to focus on uh, certain things about geometric se uh, series. Uh, we will look at other types of uh, series or sequences, but uh, oscillating things aren't really going to be something that we're going to be looking at uh, too much in this lesson. So a geometric series is a series where we have this thing, uh, the, the, here's our sequence, a of uh, a times r to the n power. Now in this case, uh, I, pr I really like having the fact that this should be a sub 1. Uh, because it's a little confusing. That's the first output value of the sequence. And here I'm going to say a sub 1. And the r value, 
uh, the the R that they have for a uh, in a geometric sequence, R is the uh, constant ratio. Okay, and basically what that means is like uh, like a sub two over a sub one is equal to a sub 3 over a sub 2. Whatever these ratios are, they're the same all the time. Okay, where we kind of compare consecutive uh, values from each other and, and they always equal to the same, uh, same number, the same ratio. That is your uh, constant uh, ratio. And if the constant ratio is greater than 1, uh, typically that's going to uh, be associated with a geometric sequence that grows without bound. So the sum of that would be uh, infinity and uh, they would diverge. And if the constant ratio is less than one, meaning specifically like the, if the absolute value of the ratio is less than one, uh, then the sum of that particular geometric series would approach a finite number, meaning it would converge. Okay. And here, the next thing that we're going to see are some equations for the sum, okay? And again, I like to see this as a sub 1 and a sub 1. I think it makes a little bit more sense. Uh, here, a geometric series with a ratio of r, you know, the, the, if the absolute value of r is going to be greater than or equal to 1, it diverges. However, if it's less than 1, then it converges. And what we're seeing here, this is the, uh, this is the finite sum of an infinite sequence or an infinite series is what we're seeing. Uh, this one here specifically is going to be something when the R value is going to be, the absolute value of R is going to be less than 1. Okay, We can't use that uh, particular sum formula if the R value is greater than 1. This is only for uh, the finite sum of an infinite sequence. The next one here, this is going to be more what we would have uh, where we're saying the partial sums of a geometric sequence. In this case, this is the one where I would use uh, if my R value in this case is greater than or equal to 1 uh, because this is going to be indicating because the R value is going to be growing uh, continuously, it's going to be an exponential growth, meaning it grows without bound, therefore it's uh, unbounded. Now, uh, I do want to include a couple of different uh, ways of writing this. If you looked it up online or if you looked it up in a textbook, uh, what we're seeing here, this is pretty typical. Uh, this is almost what you're going to see in any given um, geometric sequence kind of or geometric series kind of lesson is that's how we generally uh, write the sum or the partial sum of a geometric series that grows without bound because you know we may not we, we may only be looking for it from like I don't know 1 to 10 or something like that it just depends on the situation but we can write this in a couple of different ways uh, some ways may look at it as saying uh, where they just specifically put the a sub 1 in the parentheses and they multiply it by 1 minus r to the power of n and all of that is divided by 1 minus r. Uh, that's another very common way of seeing that formula written. Uh, but you may also see it as a uh, pair of fractions where we would say a sub 1 over 1 minus r minus a sub 1 times r to the n power over 1 minus r. So uh, this particular, you know, these two things, they're basically the same. I mean, the third one is the same, but it's a different way of, you know, looking at it. And this is something that we're going to look at in a little bit on one of our examples, because if we're going to be looking at this as a limit, uh, as, a, as in, you know, as the limit goes to infinity, uh, it's going to be a lot easier looking at the limit with the, the two fractions that we have at the, in the bottom example then if we try to just do direct substitution with either of the two equations at the top or in the middle. Okay. 
So here, uh, find a sub 1. That's easy. A sub 1 is literally just the first... <laughs> I'm writing a sub 1. Uh, it's just the first output of the expression, which is given to you to just be 8. Easy peasy. Uh, what is R? R is when we take the constant ratio here. Now, in th the fact that they're telling us it's geometric, we don't need to show that it's geometric because if they just gave us a sequence and we had to determine like the uh, equation or the expression for that sequence, then we would have to check maybe a couple or three different ratios to make sure that it was going to be constant. In this case, they're telling us it's geometric, so I can literally pick any two consecutive terms and put them in a ratio. So we would say 8 fifths compared to 8. And if I simplify that ratio by multiplying the top and the bottom by 1 over 8, uh, in this case, the constant ratio is going to simplify to be 1 fifth. Now that tells me uh, automatically because the R value is less than 1, uh, this particular function is going to be decreasing over time uh, because the base of the exponential function is the constant ratio. And if it's less than 1, it's decreasing or a decaying function. Uh, it will converge to a specific uh, uh, sum. But anyway, uh, write the infinite series using summation notation. All right, that's easy enough. Uh, in this case, the uh, sum using summation notation, we can say it's going to be sigma, where we start at n is equal to 1 for a series, uh, because you know, sequences are only going to use positive inputs, uh, one or greater. It's going to go to infinity. Uh, it is an infinite uh, series and sequence. And the general thing is just A sub 1 times R to the n power. Now, in this case, we, because we're starting at n is equal to 1, we're going to subtract 1 here. If we started at n was equal to 0, we could start it at just it to the n power. Uh, so here, this is a sub 1 times the constant ratio to the n minus 1 power. Uh, so in this case, we would have our summation, and I'm, I don't, I'm not super great at writing sigma. I don't know why. Uh, I have a very hard time doing that for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, I think you'll understand my sigma notation eventually. Uh, here, in this case, we're looking at uh, still n being equal to 1 to infinity. And in this case, we know that a sub 1 is 8, and the r value is 1 fifth. So I would say 8 times 1 fifth to the n minus 1 power uh, for the uh, for the series uh, of the sequence that we were given here. Can we find the fourth partial sum? Sure we can. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways that we could do it. Uh, again, we can go back and use this uh, here. We, we can find this one and, and use either of these three expressions to determine the uh, fourth partial sum. Um, in this case, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it using that because it's pretty easy to figure out what the first four terms are going to be considering they gave them to us. We're still going to use a calculator one way or another to do the arithmetic on this. So... Here, uh, using sigma notation, we can say uh, the fourth partial sum, in this case, we would go from n is equal to 1 to 4 to indicate the fourth partial sum. And so I would say uh, 8 times 1 fifth times n to the, or to the n minus 1 power, and, and we could just write that out. You can type that into your calculator if you're using sigma notation on your calculator. And this is going to work out to be uh, 1248 over uh, 125. Uh, another way of doing it is literally just taking the four first, the first four numbers that they gave you, 8 plus 8 fifths plus 8 20 fifths plus 8 one twenty fifths, and you can just type that into your calculator if that is easier, uh, and you'll still get the same answer of twelve forty eight over one twenty five. Simple enough. 
Now again, most of this stuff here, all of this, what we're seeing so far really shouldn't be new information. This should really be kind of review from things that you would have seen uh, with your lessons of sequences and series uh, in pre-cal. But I know not every calculus student takes it, but again, uh, that's you know why we're not going into real detail on a lot of these problems. Uh, we have to have some of that understanding already. Uh, find the infinite sum of s sub n. Okay, uh, so in this case, where is e? In my notes, in example three. Oh no, I'm getting. Uh, I'm not that far yet. Okay, so for for an infinite sum in this case, because r, uh, the absolute value of r in this case was less than one, then that means the infinite sum is going to be found by this formula, a sub one over one minus r, uh, and that's all we have to do. So in this case, eight was the first term over one minus one fifth for the r term. So eight divided by one uh, by four fifths uh, multiply uh, forty over four. That's going to be ten. Okay. So in this case, this is what the uh, what we would be able to show uh, why this particular function is going to converge. What we've seen uh, earlier in some of the information that it was given to you, it says if the sequence of the partial sums converge, which it does then the series converges. And I know it converges. I know the sum converges because it approaches a specific number. Now, in this case, find the limit. Now, in this case, the limit is actually going to work out to be the same as the sum. And this is where we wanted to use that. Uh, this is where we want to use uh, that, that, that third way of I wrote the, the summing formula. So in this case, if I look at the limit, of s sub n, the sum of the infinite series. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say uh, n approaches infinity. Now you can look at this one of two ways. Uh, if you understand that this is going to be, uh, because it has a constant value of, or a constant ratio, I should say, that's less than one, you can kind of look at just this here, okay? Because if we go back, a couple of pages here. If we go back a couple of pages, this is really where this is coming from. Okay? That's really where that comes from. And that happens to be when, in this case, uh, we're going to infinity, the sum uh, at infinity. And you can see that if we look at, well, let me just go back here and write that down. If we come back to the problem and we write down the sum uh, the way it was uh, given to us on the, or the way that I gave it to you on that third page or on the, a couple of pages ago. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say uh, a sub 1 over 1 minus r minus a sub 1 times r to the n power. Now, in this case, the reason why I'm using this one uh, to illustrate what the limit is going to be, to show that it's going to basically just be this thing here, I kind of have to use the expanded form because I got to have an n term to do my limit with if I'm saying n is approaching infinity. So this was uh, in the denominator here. This was still just 1 minus r. Okay. Now, if I do my direct substitution in the numerator, uh, well, let me... Let me plug in my numbers first here. Uh, so the limit as n approaches infinity. And in this case, we had 8 over 1 minus r. Uh, 1 minus 1 fifth is 4 fifths. And here we're going to say uh, 8 again times the 1 fifth to the power of n. And again, this is going to be 4 fifths in the denominator, 4 fifths. Okay. Uh, but here, when I do my direct substitution because of that fraction, uh, one-fifth, uh, what we're going to wind up doing, because it's a fraction that we're raising to the infinity power or the power of infinity, this whole thing winds up going to zero, which, of course, just left me that. And we already know the limit of that we, because we just did it in the last example. So the limit in this case is 10. 
Now, find each of the following if possible, and if not possible, explain why. Uh, so here it's just asking you to find the sum of the numbers, and, or the sum of the two series, and see what we're going to end up with. So here uh, we have what looks like not a geometric series on the left side, uh, but possibly a geometric series on the right side. So, uh, no, the, I'm sorry, the one on the left is geometric. I'm thinking of this. This one here on the left can be rewritten as the sum uh, in, and here they're starting at zero going to infinity. Uh, so here, that's the initial, that can be uh, construed as the initial value. Now, don't, uh, that's a little hairy. This may or may not be the first term. You actually have to substitute one into the expression. And so maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Sometimes they're not the same thing. If I really want to know a sub one, I have to actually plug one into the, into the sequence. And in this case, that would be two thirds in that case. Uh, to, to really, like if I have to do my summing formula. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So here, what we're going to look at, uh, the reason why I wanted to look at this one is because I can rewrite this ratio one-third to the power of n because it is going to apply, you know, one to the n power is still just going to be one, but uh, the property for the exponents there is so that the it is going to be one third for our constant ratio so the first series is definitely geometric and uh, let's see so here on this one uh, a sub one uh, for this one let me go to a different color and we'll do purple here uh, so if I want to do a sub uh, one here. If I want to here again, find a sub one. Uh, in this case, we're going to uh, substitute one for n, so that'll give me two to the zero power over five to the zero power, which would just be one. One over one is one. Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> Why did I put a zero there? I'm not thinking my way. Uh, that would just be five to the first power. So zero. Uh, so to the zero power is one over five. There we go. Yeah, eventually I'll get my brain at a at a first gear. So there's there's that. And I hear something buzzing. Give me. I'm gonna have to pause the video for just a second. Bear with me, guys. Sorry about that. All right. Sorry about the uh, pause there. Uh, so what we're looking at, uh, going back to the example here on A, we're trying to find the sum of the two series if it's possible. And um, I want to say. Uh, because here R is greater, or here on the, the, the expression on the left, we're definitely going to have uh, the sum, uh, a finite sum of an infinite series, meaning that uh, we can say, uh, here I'm going to say A sub 1 over uh, 1 minus R, and then we'll do the same thing here, and in this case, uh, this one is also going to be geometric. The one on the right here is going to have an R value the one on the right here is going to have an R value of the two fifths. Okay, so we got a sub one here, and no, uh, here pay attention to the difference. So here, this a sub one, the one fifth is good, but I don't. Uh, again, I I, I kind of misplaced that zero there. Uh, in this case, this is actually not. Two third, or the a a one value is not two thirds. In this case, it is that two, because if I substitute a zero into the expression for my first output value, because that's where it tells us to start, uh, that's going to be two times one over three to the zero power, which is essentially going to just work out to be one. Uh, so two times one uh, is actually going to be a one in this case. Uh, so let's go back. We're still looking at. Uh, Okay, so we still are, because we have another geometric uh, series here, we can still say a sub 1 of this one plus uh, one, or, or over 1 minus r, minus r. So here, we're going to say 
uh, the first term where, where my first input is zero on the one on the left, so that's why a sub one is two in this case, over one minus, uh, and in this case the r value is going to be one third. And then we'll add the next one. Uh, so a sub one of the uh, series on the right, that is one fifth over one minus its R value, which was two fifths. And I need to scroll down a little bit. So let's combine these now. Let's stop writing these in two colors. Let's go ahead and combine them in the one. So here this will be two over, uh, I probably shouldn't write my ratio quite like that. I don't like seeing that go away. Uh, two over two thirds plus one fifth over uh, three fifths. And here, uh, the ratio on the left, when I multiply by uh, three over two, the twos are going to simplify, so that's going to be a three. And here, when I multiply by five over three, the fives are going to. Uh, uh, simplify, so that's going to wind up being one third. So the sum of these two things will be three and one third, uh, or ten thirds on that one. And uh, you may want to go back and just double check it on your calculator if you want to. You can type it in uh, just the way it was given to you uh, on the calculator. It might take a little bit of number crunching, but uh, there is the sum of those. So it is possible. And, you know, understanding what we know about uh, geometric series, because both of those geometric series had an R value that was less than one, uh, they must have a finite sum. And so a finite sum plus a finite sum definitely says uh, that we have one finite sum. It's just the sum of the two of them. So that the sum of those two series is going to converge. Now taking a look at the... Uh, next one on the right, well, what I'm going to look at on this one here, uh, oh, I want to change my color here. Uh, let's go blue. Looking at the one that I have on the right, um, we're going to, I think it'll be beneficial if we kind of break this up into two different summations. Oh, God, I'm, like I said, I'm not very... My mind just doesn't want to work when I write sigma for some reason. Okay, so here we're saying n is equal to zero again, and we're going to infinity. Now we can break up the series or the sequence that we have here into uh, two different fractions, where here I can say four over five to the power of n plus, and we can have another. I'm sorry, not plus. That's going to be a subtraction because the numerator is negative. Uh, so now we'll say minus, and again we'll say n is equal to zero to infinity, and then we would get uh, seven fifths to the n power. Now this one, uh, again, because we do have two geometric series uh, that we're trying to add together, uh, the one on the left here has an R value, an absolute value of the R, that is going to be less than 1. So it will have a finite sum, aka it will converge. Okay, now the, this one here, here the absolute value of my constant ratio, in this case is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, so that means this one, because the base is greater than one, it's going to be uh, a, it would you know as an exponential function, it's, it would represent exponential growth, which would be unbounded. Uh, so here, this one uh, is unbounded. The growth is going to be continuous. Uh, so here, this one diverges, diverge. Okay. So we don't really have to do anything on this one, and, and this is the justification for it, because the R value is greater than 1. It does not have a finite sum, uh, so it diverges. So that one's not possible. So now let's take a look at uh, some properties of 
uh, the Infinite series. Uh, these are going to be kind of just talking about just um, properties with sigma in general uh, when you're when you're working with sigma notation. Uh, let's see, given two convergent series, where a uh, series A, series B uh, are going to be the sums of A and B, uh, and they're real number. Given two convergent series, uh, where A, B, and C are real numbers, it sure sounds like there should be something else after that. But I guess they're just telling you that's what's given to you. But if the sum of the first series A, if the and the sum of the second series B. Uh, if both of those converge, uh, then the sum of the series will converge. And then we just saw that on, on uh, one of our last examples. Now here we're looking at some, uh, these are uh, how we're going to look at some uh, properties of sigma. Uh, and, and I want to add some things here. So for instance, um, the first one, the one on the top, where it says uh, the series is going to be C multiplied by uh, whatever the series or sequence A of N is or a sub n, uh, I can look at that same thing as c as a constant. You know, it's, it's whatever that is, it's just going to get multiplied to the uh, constant ratio or, or whatever the series uh, sequence happens to be. So here in equals 1 to infinity, this can be the same thing as c times uh, a sub n uh, like that. Uh, and... Where am I at? Uh, the one on the bottom left, where we have the sum of the two, or well, we just kind of looked at that one again. Uh, we saw something that, that uh, resembled this. We could separate these God, every time. I feel like I'm dyslexic when it comes to writing sigma sometimes. N equals one. And I don't mean that as an insult to anybody that made to be dyslexic. I just, I, for some reason, I either want to keep going like that for some reason, or I want to do like that, and I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, that's just you know a, a personal foible or quirk. So here I can say a sub n plus here n equals inf note one one to infinity of b sub n like that. Uh, that's one of our properties of uh, sigma notation, and the other one would basically be the same thing, where I would say. But in this case, we have, of course, the subtraction operation. This is just like the one that we just looked at. A sub n minus n equals 1, b sub n. OK? And uh, you know, the, the last one didn't work out very well because this one, uh, the first one that we saw on the last example, did have a finite sum, but this one uh, did not, and so uh, we couldn't, you know, actually take the difference of them. But uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look here. Now we're going to be taking a look at uh, a telescoping series. Uh, now let me write something down here. I'm going to pause the video while I write it down. So just one second. Okay, I just wanted to uh, write down kind of a definition of what a telescoping series is. Now, earlier I said what a telescoping series is. A lot of times that the uh, the first term and the last term are the only terms that are left. And that, that's often the case, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it may be like the first or the third term uh, that are what's left over after you do all your canceling. It just kind of depends on what your sequence gives you. So uh, here what I'm telling you is that a series, a telescoping series is a series whose partial sums eventually only have a finite sum, a finite number of terms, okay? So after you do, even though the series themselves may be uh, infinite, uh, they're, meaning that they're never ending, the sum of them actually works out to only have a, uh, some finite terms. And it does take a little bit of, you know, looking into it. They're, they're not always going to just jump out at you as, uh, seeing, you know, oh, hey, this is going to be telescoping. Uh, here, it's telling you specifically, go ahead and use partial fractions uh, and the limit uh, of the uh, sequence to find the sum of the series. So uh, in this case here, this is where we're going to use one of our limit or our sigma properties. Uh, I can take this and I can rewrite it as uh, partial fractions where I say, this is going to be, uh, well, 
ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to break it up and break this up into two different parts here. And I don't know if I want to, so we'll just go ahead and start it here. N equals one to infinity of uh, one over N plus uh, N equals one to infinity of one over N plus one. That's essentially what we're looking at uh, for our partial fractions when we work it out. Now, of course, we need to make sure that we identify that A and B are actually going to be one. Uh, so here, using partial fractions, what I'm going to have is I'm going to say uh, one over n times n plus one uh, can be broken down into partial fractions of a over n plus uh, b over n plus one. Uh, multiplying through with a common denominator, I'm going to get an a uh, get one is equal to a times n plus one plus b times n. Uh, so in this case, when you substitute uh, zero for n, uh, when n is equal to zero, that will give you a to be equal to one, which I kind of told you it was going to be. And if I substitute n to be equal to a negative one, uh, then that will give me b, in this case, to be a negative one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come back to this and I'm going to change that plus sign to a minus sign. So we have positive one here and the negative is going to apply to that one there. So that's how we're using our partial fractions and our properties of uh, sigma to write those two summations. So uh, now what we're going to be looking at, okay, well, let's look at the partial series. Uh, so let me, let me just clean this up a bit, okay? Oh, okay, let's just all right, start over. Uh, let's move on to a different color here so that way uh, we can, sh we can sh uh, show that we're doing something new now. So we, we've taken our partial fractions of the uh, sequence that was given to us by the series, and we've established using our properties of uh, sigma notation that here this is going to be n is equal to 1 to infinity. This was a positive 1 over n, and then we had a subtraction, and n equals 1 to infinity, and this one was 1 over n plus 1. So what we want to know is what is what are the outputs going to be? Well, in this case, a sub 1 is going to be whatever we get from both of the two series uh, that I happen to have here. So if I take a 1 and I plug it into the series on the left, I'm going to get 1 over 1, which simplifies to be 1. If I take 1 and I plug it into the series on the right, and I'm not supposed to write a parenthesis here, I'm not writing an ordered pair, we're subtracting uh, the, the output of the first term of the series on the right, so that'll give me 1 half. Okay, and now we're going to take the next term. So the next term, a sub 2, and we're going to repeat. If I take a 2 and I plug it into the series on the left, that'll give me a positive 1 half minus, do it to the next one, that'll give me a uh, one third. Keep going. A sub 3. Well, if I plug in a 3 on the series on the left, that gives me a positive one third minus a one fourth. And we can keep going. Okay, uh, I'll do one more here, a to the fourth. So here we're going to say plus, and this will be one fourth minus one fifth. And it would keep going ad nauseum like that to infinity until we got to our final term, wherever, wherever it actually ended up stopping. Well, if I substitute n on the left side, I just get the 1 over n minus the uh, 1 over n plus 1 if I substitute it into the series on the right. Now, what happens if, you're, if you've been paying attention to the numbers that we're getting, this negative 1 half and that positive 1 half 
cancel. This negative one third and that positive one third cancel. Negative one fourth, positive one fourth, and so on. Now, even though I didn't continue writing it, this negative one fifth would combine with a positive one fifth here, and ultimately, I'm going to have a negative one ninth here, or one over in here, with a positive one over in here. And all that's left is the sum of one minus uh, one over n plus one. Okay, so that's what the telescoping series does. All of the terms canceled except for a finite amount. In this case, the first term and the last term. Now, what it's asking us to do, it says find the limit of that. So this is where I'm going to find the limit. Find the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression. And of course, if we substitute uh, infinity in the denominator, the, the 1 really doesn't matter in the denominator, uh, this part here, this part here is going to go to 0. So 1 minus 0 says that the limit in this case of this telescoping series, oh, nope, it's not 0, it's 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. I can do kindergarten math. There we go. So that's what a telescoping series does. Uh, sometimes you need to expand it out a little bit like I'm doing here so you can properly see the pattern of how things are going to wind up canceling. Uh, and then whatever is left over for the finite terms, that's what you can take the limit of, and you're done. Now, looking at this one here, given the sequence, uh, 1 over n times n plus 1, explain the difference between a sequence and the series. So we're still looking at the same expression that we were looking at in the last example. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and take a moment and think about this. I'm going to pause the video so I can write down my answers, but think about what your answers are going to be. Try pausing the video yourself and write down your own explanations, and when you're done, hit play to see what mine are. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is what I am uh, giving as the difference between what the sequence and what the series is. Well, the sequence itself is just a collection of outputs uh, based on whatever the sequence is. So we get, uh, for the first term, one half, second term, one sixth, and so on. And what happens is that as we continue going to bigger and bigger values of n, the outputs actually get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they approach uh, a limit of zero in this case. And you can see very easily if you just you know do direct substitution in the denominator, you're going to get a, a limit of zero as n approaches infinity. Uh, however, the sum of those particular, uh, of those same numbers does not approach zero. Uh, the sum in this case, if you were to work it out, is going to go towards one. So the fact that the series, or the fact that the sequence has a limit as it approaches zero, you know, does not necessarily mean that it's going to be the same thing as the sum. Now, this is going to play into something that we're going to be looking at here in a moment, because here in a moment, what we're going to be talking about is something called the nth term test for convergence. And one of the ways that we can tell if something is going to converge or diverge is if the limit of a series is equal to zero or not, or not, pardon me. And that's going to create a little bit of confusion because simply because the limit approaches zero for a uh, series does not guarantee that it's going to approach or that it's going to converge. Uh, the only way that we can guarantee a series is going to converge using the nth term test where we look at it in terms of a limit uh, is if the limit approaches zero or if the limit as n approaches infinity is equal to zero, and what we're seeing here, like here, the sum of the series is going to be a finite number. That is going to tell me that in this case, the particular series that we're looking at will converge at the number one, okay? But uh, let's get into that in a moment. So just, just keep that in your minds as we move forward, all right? So the last thing it's asking us to do is write a geometric series for the repeating decimal 0 0.05 as a ratio of two integers. Well, this one is, uh, you know, this one can be a little bit challenging if you, you know, as far as figuring out what the constant ratio is going to be. 
So here, where we started off uh, with, if we just started off with just 0 0.05, uh, we're going to look at, you know, we have 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 repeating. Uh, ultimately, what that's going to look like for our first term, our first term is going to be the ratio of 5 to 10 squared. And the next one, 0 0.0505, would be 5 to 10 to the fourth power. And the next one would be 5 times 10 to the sixth power, and so on. Okay, and that can be a little bit difficult to, to see, okay? Uh, you know, you might want to have a calculator. On the calculator, it's probably not going to give you 10 to a power. It'd probably give you 100 uh, and so on, and you'd have to recognize, oh, we, we can get it as a common base. Uh, but either way, even if you don't write it out as a, a common base, as a 10 to a power of something, uh, that's fine. Either the constant ratio should still be the same either way. Uh, now, in this case, the first term is just the 5 over 10 squared, or 5 over 100, if you prefer. Now, the constant ratio, we can just take the, it, again, we don't need to prove that it's geometric. It's telling us to write a geometric series. Uh, so I can just take the ratio of the, the first two terms, because those are overall going to be the smallest terms. And here, guys, I'm, I, I, I'm going to be honest. I just went to a calculator for this one. I'm going to say... Uh, 5 over 10 to the 4th power over 5 over 10 squared for the constant ratio. And when I got this one, I got it to either be 1 over 10 squared. That's not what the calculator gave me. Uh, but the, the calculator gave it to me as 1 over 100. But either way, that's what the constant ratio is going to be, whichever version you prefer. Uh, so write the geometric series. Well, to be able to write a geometric series, all I need is the first term, and I need the constant ratio, and we are off, uh, off and running. Okay. Uh, now here in this case, the way that I'm doing it uh, is I'm going to write it starting at n is equal to zero, uh, and I'm going to say uh, to infinity, and I'm going to say the first term. And I'm going to put it in parentheses because it is that kind of weird fraction. 5 over 10 to the power of 2. And the constant ratio is 1 over 10 squared. And because I'm starting it at n is equal to 0, I'm going to just say to the nth power for the constant ratio. And let's see. So I write a geometric series for the repeating decimals of the two ratio of the two integers. So that's what it would be. That's, that's actually the geometric series. Um, and it's not asking us to do it, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you uh, now, and, and this is something that you can pause the video for here in a second. Uh, what's, uh, those colors are too similar to each other. Uh, what's the sum? Pause the video, try to find the sum of that particular uh, geometric series. And when you have it, go ahead and hit play and compare your answers with mine. Okay, and there you go. There's the, uh, because the constant ratio in this case is going to be less than one, we can use the uh, finite sum of an infinite series. Uh, so I'm just saying a sub one over one minus, uh, I don't know why I said r1. It's just r, not r1. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to get 5 over 10 squared, or I just wrote it as 5 over 100, uh, over 1 minus 100, 1 minus 1 over 100. Uh, and when it all simplified, we got 5 over 99. So uh, hopefully you're able to get that okay. So now let's move on to what I was talking about here a second ago, the nth test for uh, convergence or divergence. Now what it's telling us here, it says if a series converges, then the limit of its nth term must be 0. Okay, now this is the catch, is that in this case, this is a may or may not situation. It may or may not converge. And we'll explain why on one of the examples here, okay? 
uh, because as I was as I was saying a moment ago, the the limit the limit as n approaches zero or I'm sorry infinity as n approaches infinity of some sequence. If it approaches zero, then it could converge. However, the only way that I can verify that if it converges is if the sum of the infinite series equals a specific number. Pick a variable if you want to. It has to equal a specific number, okay? Because if the sum grows without bound, even if the limit is approaching zero, it means that the function or that the series is going to diverge. So this is a may or may not kind of situation. Now, uh, I love when they throw in our uh, geometry vocabulary here, uh, the contrapositive. Uh, will give us a useful test for divergence. That means, uh, that is, if the limit does not converge to zero, then the series must diverge. And that one's pretty straightforward. If the limit does not equal zero, uh, yeah, you can say that the limit is going to, or that the uh, series is going to diverge. There, there's not any kind of ambiguity uh, with that one. So here, let's take a look at this one. Uh, ideally, again, uh, looking at this uh, type of function, it's a rational function, a lot of us are going to be able to look at that and, and immediately say it's a balanced function, so the n behavior is going to go to one-fifth as x goes towards infinity or as n goes towards infinity. Uh, so in this case, it does have a limit of one-fifth. Uh, so what does that mean? Okay. Now, of course, you know, maybe this is a free response question, you have to have some kind of calculus justification. Now, if you just go straight into it and you say the limit of the expression uh, n squared over 5n squared plus 4 as n approaches uh, infinity, uh, that is going to give you an indeterminate form that's going to give you infinity over infinity. Now, you can either use L'Hopital's rule uh, to take the derivative of the top and the bottom. You can multiply uh, the top and the bottom by the reciprocal of uh, n squared and, uh, you know, simplify the ratio that way. Um, here, I guess it really doesn't make a difference. So I'm going to say the limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, and here I'm going to show that I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule, uh, g, of, g prime of x over f prime of x. I know I usually write it the other way around, but I think my brain was work my hand was working faster than my brain was. Uh, so here I'm going to get 2n over 5n, which is again going to be infinity over infinity. Uh, so I take the second derivative and that's where I get my two fifths. So the limit of the, uh, nope, <laughs> uh, golly, I am, so slow tonight. My like my brain and my hand can't catch up. This is 10 in, which would give me 2 over 10, which would be one fifth for the limit. That's the actual limit. One fifth, not not two tenths. Okay. So what does that tell us? Uh, in this case, the series. Uh, so let me let me write the solution here in uh, a different color. Uh, so here I would say the series n equals 1 to infinity of n squared over 5 n squared plus 4 uh, is a diverging series and what's so that's my conclusion what's my justification uh, diverging series and my justification is because the limit as n approached infinity did not equal zero there's the justification and that one's pretty straightforward uh, the next one uh, again is not meant to really be anything that's going to be uh, you know, strenuous. Again, uh, rational function, you should be able to see very quickly. Uh, it's a bottom heavy function. So, you know, but that's a, a pre cal justification. The limit will go to zero. Uh, now, here I'm not going to use L'Hopital's rule to simplify it on this one. I could, 
uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just multiply, uh, in this case, by the reciprocal of 1 over n cubed to the top and the bottom. So here, n cubed and 1 over n cubed simplify to be 1, and that's going to give me in the top, uh, n over n cubed will give me 1 over n squared uh, over 1 plus 1 over n cubed. And so now when I do uh, my direct substitution going towards infinity, uh, this is going to go to 0, and this is going to go to 0. So that's going to give me a 0 over 1, which is 0. So there's the limit. Now, what does that tell us? Okay, so if, if you took this statement at its face value without any kind of clarification, uh, you would say if a series converges, uh, or it, what I'm looking at is right here, if a series converges, then the limit is equal to 0. Uh, so most people, if they took that just without any kind of, you know, uh, you know, outside interference like I'm trying to give you, uh, in this case, most people are going to say, hey, the limit is going to go to zero in this case, so the series must converge. Uh, but here I'm not going to make that conclusion. I'm going to say uh, the series... Uh, as n equals 1 of infinity, because the, now could I show that it gonna, is it going to converge? Yes, I could. What I would have to do to show for sure if this is going to converge is I would have to know, does the sum of this series approach a finite number? If the sum of this series approaches a finite number, then I would be able to say, yes, without a doubt, this will converge. Otherwise, Without doing that, I can't justify for a fact that it will converge. That's why I'm going to say it may or may not. So here, the series n over n cubed plus 1 may converge, may converge. And so there's my answer and my justification because the limit as n approached infinity uh, was equal to zero. So there's my just there's the answer and my justification. Now the last one uh, is even easier to see what the limit is going to be. This one, holy cow, we don't have to do anything to it. Now one of the things I want to point out to you is because you're going to see this again. This is called the harmonic series. It's called the harmonic series. I, what I understand it to be, they think it, it was kind of, ex, this is how it was explained to me at one point. Anyway, it's called the harmonic series because if we took a sinusoidal signal, like an audio wave, okay? And, and again, maybe it's just like a pure note, one, one period, okay? Uh, well, over that period, as it continued to increase, from one term to the next, uh, we would wind up getting, uh, in this case, we would have, and I'm not drawing this very good because I'm freehanding it, the second term would have two periods in the same time frame. And then the next one would have three periods in the same time frame, and so on. That's what it's referring to as a harmonic series. Now, if you take the sum of all of those, so here, again, this one, without a doubt, the limit on this one is, let me, I guess I should do it properly. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n is equal to 0, okay? That's not in question. That is not, it, it, that's, don't have to do anything to figure that out. 1 over a very large number is, is 0, okay? But this one absolutely does not uh, converge. Because if we take the sum of this particular infinite series, the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And if we went out far enough, the sums are going to continue to grow infinitely. Uh, but again, we're not trying to, we're not doing that. We're not going into that much detail. We're just trying to say, does this converge? And my answer 
because it's not asking me to do that, but that's what I would have to do if I if I'm using the nth term test to prove convergence or diverge or to prove convergence, I would also have to use the sum to show does the sum go to a finite number. Uh, but anyway, in this case, I'm going to say uh, the sum as n equals one to infinity of one over n, my harmonic series may converge. So there's my answer, and here's my justification, because uh, the limit as n approached infinity is equal to zero. But the sum here, if you took the sum of the, inf of the harmonic series, it will continue to grow infinitely. Uh, and so that's why, even though the limit is equal to zero, uh, this particular series diverges. It, it would not converge. Now we got two more examples to look through real quick, and they're they're relatively straightforward as far as what it's asking us to do. So I'm going to do one for you because the second one is pretty, you know, not exactly the same, but it follows the same principles. Uh, here, formulas with formulas and term values from the nth term partial sums. Find the nth partial sum of a series uh, that is given to you to be n plus two over n plus five. Uh, so write a rule for a sub n, okay? Well, what it's asking us to do, write that formula. Well, uh, a sub n essentially is going to be whatever the last sum is minus the sum that came right before it, okay? So if we look at it here, let's see. Let's get some numbers going. All right, let's look at it like this. Here, with the, the, the series, you know, we're just looking at the series. We're going to have a sub 1 and plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we got to a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n, whatever the the the, the up, upward bound of the partial sum is going to be okay well from here from here to here all of this is the sum of that series or of that sequence n plus 2 over n plus 5 okay now, stay with me here. Let's do black from here to here. That is the sum of n minus one of that same expression. Now, if I set, if I substitute n minus one, I'm going to get n minus one plus two over n minus 1 plus 5, which would, uh, you know, we really don't need the parentheses. That would just be n minus 1, no, plus 1 over n plus 4. Okay, so guess what? We have expressions that I can substitute here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. A sub n, well, S sub n is going to be n plus 2 over n plus 5 minus n plus 1 over n plus 4. Uh, so I need to uh, simplify this. I need to get a common denominator. Uh, so we're going to multiply the entire thing by... Uh, n plus 5 times n plus 4, and that's going to give me n plus 2 times n plus 4 minus n plus 1 times n plus 5, all of it over n plus 5 times n plus 4. Okay, with me so far? Uh, we can distribute, whoops, didn't mean to go down that far. We can distribute the numerator 
and that will give me uh, n squared plus 6n plus 8 minus n squared plus 6n plus 5 over n plus 5 times n plus 4. And if you distribute the negative, you're going to see the n squared and the n squared are going to cancel. The positive 6n and this 6n are going to cancel when I distribute the, the, the negative. And ultimately, what I'm going to have in the numerator is 8 minus 5, which will give me a numerator of 3. And the denominator doesn't have anything to simplify with, so I'm going to just leave it as n plus 5 times n plus 4. And there is my expression for a sub n from the given uh, sequence, or the sum that they give us. So the last example, again, very similar to the one that we just did. Please go ahead and pause the video and try working this one out on your own. See how you did. And when you're ready, hit play, and then check your work with mine. All right, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, the rule... 4a sub 6, in this case, is just going to be the difference of the sum of the sixth term minus the sum of the fifth term. And that is how we're going to establish what uh, a sub 6 is going to be. So here, uh, when we substitute 6, uh, we get uh, a sum of 38 sevenths. When we substitute 5, we get a sum of 27 sixths. And the difference of those, 13 14ths. And that uh, is going to uh, conclude what we've been talking about uh, for series and convergence. So again, just to recap, series are basically just going to be the sum of uh, a sequence. Uh, in this case, we were looking at uh, being able to identify uh, properties of a geometric sequence and how we can understand with a geometric sequence if the common ratio was greater than or equal to one it, we would be able to conclude that the series was going to diverge if the common ratio was less than uh, the absolute value is less than one then we can conclude that the series would converge uh, we talked about the nth test series uh, for convergence and uh, we said that the if we look at the limit of the nth test, uh, if it approached or if the limit was zero, we could say it may converge. But of course, we would have to show that the sum actually approached a specific number if we needed to know if it would converge or not. However, the nth test term showed us that if we you know, got a limit that was anything but zero, uh, we could show that the, the series would diverge. And... Uh, just some general things about series, I think, that we had. Of course, telescoping series, you know, where uh, all of the terms are going to uh, eliminate except for a, usually a couple. And, uh, yeah, I think that's all we have for our summary. But thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your patience. Hope you learned something. And I uh, hope you're all well. Take care. and We'll talk to you soon.